In the name of Allah, the Beneficent, the Merciful, the one God to whom all praise is due. We thank Almighty God, Allah, for his coming to us in the person of Master Farad Muhammad, the long-awaited Messiah of the Christian world and Mahdi of the Muslim world. We thank that God for coming and fulfilling the scriptures of the Bible, where God said that I, even I, will go after the lost sheep that rejected people, a people who would go under a name change, a people who would lose their God, their culture, their way, a people who will be taken from their land into a strange land amongst some strange people. God said that when he come, he would come as a thief in the night and he will come in sinful flesh to condemn sin in the flesh. Well, we believe and know that he came at a time when America was very happy and celebrating their independence. He came July the 4th, 1930. And when he came, he found in Detroit, Michigan, he found groping a Georgia-born black man by the name of the most honorable Elijah Muhammad, that one who Deuteronomy speaks of, where Deuteronomy says that God would raise one from among them like unto Moses. Moses did not have an education from Pharaoh. In fact, Moses did not speak grammatically correct in his day. Moses spoke with a stammering speech. Moses spoke with a knot in his tongue. So therefore, in the last day, we should be looking for a leader who this world cannot claim that they educated. We should be looking for a leader that by standards of this world, he would be deemed as ignorance. Likewise, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad only had a fourth grade education but from the book of supreme wisdom that was given to him, that teaching is now confining and confusing the wise. And we thank Elijah and we thank Allah who came in the person of Master Farad Muhammad for leaving with us our divine reminder, a divine comforter, a divine teacher, a divine guide. To me, this man is the boldest the most brightest of all of the defense attorney who have ever defended the black man and woman and oppressed people throughout the diaspora of the world. That man is the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan and in their holy and righteous names, I greet you all in the greeting words of peace. Assalamu alaikum. How's everyone feeling? All praise is due to Allah feeling fine myself as a student minister in the nation of Islam under the leadership of the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan, we would like to thank all of you for being here today. And to those who will be watching this lecture via the television, we want to welcome you to the Truth Hour, where we will be hurling truth at falsehood until we bash out the brains of falsehood. We want to thank you today and to all of those who spoke before me, brothers and sisters, will you all help me and let's give student minister Vernon, student minister uh, Charles Muhammad, and our wonderful student minister, sister Aisha Muhammad, let's give them all some love and a round of applause for their words. All praises due to your love. For I'm truly blessed with people who know the word of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad and know scripture. We don't profess to be perfect in our knowledge, but we believe that we have enough given to us by the Honorable Elijah Muhammad to where we can lead those that are deaf, dumb, and blind out of a grave of ignorance. Before we go uh, any further, brothers and sisters, there is a gentleman who would like to also extend to you the greetings. And uh, 
we are dialoguing with him. Uh, his name is uh, Reverend Price. Uh, I think he'd like to say a few words to you as well. Roll the tape. Are you following me? See, how do I know that? Well, your words, your actions, and your works ought to prove it. There ought to be some way I can tangibly check it out and track it back and find out. So we're going to look at some things. We started last time, but we're going to look at some more things to see if we can find out who this is, who these people are, who Muhammad is, who Allah is, who Jehovah God is, who Jesus is, who Elijah Muhammad is, who Louis Farrakhan is. We're going to be checking it out. And uh, I want to say to all of my Muslim brothers, brothers in the skin at least, you know, all of my Muslim brothers, assalamu alaikum. Okay? Thought you might like that. And a slab of bacon to you too. <laughs> all praise is due to Allah. He's going to be one one day. He, he, he's coming around, brothers and sisters. He's coming around. Now, Chesley, can y'all hear me? <laughs> Go ahead. All he needs is about a hundred final calls, man. And he said, Asalamallah. I mean, he, he's trying. But anyway, brothers and sisters, before we, let me recap some of the things uh, from last week. And let me set the tone with the help of Allah. Again, I must, in the best spirit and in the best manner, I must defend the teachings of three men. I must defend the teachings of Master Farad Muhammad. I must defend the teachings of the most honorable Elijah Muhammad. And I must defend their witness, the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. I have the right to question the ideology, the theology of my brother, Reverend Price. But I will not ever care to assassinate my brother. For that, we have no right to do. That is not our way. Our way is peace. The same way that was Jesus is our way. We have invited brother and have written him many letters and he refused to come and sit with us. So we thought we may bring him in via his tapes and we can talk to him based on what we will see on the video screen. Now, this is dialogue, brothers and sisters, because we want to end a century of war and going to the next millennium dialoguing with our Christian brothers and sisters, particularly the preachers of Christianity. Number two, in the nation of Islam, we believe in the teachings of Jesus. Is that right? Now, we do not believe that Jesus came with a religion called Christianity. Last week, we asked Reverend Price, and Reverend Price, neither have any other clergy proven to us that Jesus taught a religion called Christianity. If so, show us in the Bible where Jesus said, this day I leave with you a religion called Christianity. So we want to make a distinction, Reverend Price. We disagree with you. Reverend Price says that Jesus is Christianity. We asked the question, did Jesus say that? Or did Reverend Price say that? Jesus can speak for himself. Is that right? Yeah. Or Reverend Price and others like you, is that a figment of your imagination? Did the white man tell you to say that? Who is your teacher? Reverend Price, who is your teacher? 
You may say, well, God is my teacher and the Bible is my teacher. Well, who changed the Bible? Huh? In the preface of the Bible, do the Bible preface say this is a scripture from God or does the preface of the Bible say this is a book from 32 scholars? And out of the 32 scholars, were the Japanese at the table? Of the 32 scholars, was the Chinese at the table? Of those 32 scholars, Reverend Price, was the Indians at the table? Was our brown brothers that you call Mexican, was any of those scholars at the table? Where was the black man among those 32 scholars? Or does the 32 scholars also refer to the Masonic order? Well, these white men was given 32 degrees of knowledge to spread among the earth. And if you were given 32 degrees of knowledge, that is just enough knowledge to freeze you in your motion. All praise is due to Allah. And we got to answer these questions. Now, any clergy out there in the TV listening audience that know this, then come and sit with us. We want to sit with anybody that want to sit with us. We will come. We will I mean, invite us anywhere. We don't run in the name of Jesus, nor in the name of Muhammad. We will come when asked to come. Reverend Price, why won't you come and sit with Brother Farrakhan? What is it that's in Brother Farrakhan's mouth that you fear? You may be converted. Huh? Is that what you fear? Brother Farrakhan is one of the most humble men I know. He is not a hater of white people. He is not a hater of the preacher. Reverend Price, Jesus is not Christianity. Jesus is Jesus. So to our Christian brothers and sisters, you cannot be a Muslim without believing in Jesus. The only distinction, brothers and sisters, we just don't believe Jesus is an equal to God. God has no equal. And I will verify it by Jesus' words, where he himself said he is not greater than the one that sent him. These are his words. I can't give you no uh, Jesus according to Tony Muhammad. I didn't witness Jesus. Now, Reverend Price want to reinterpret it. Why don't you say it's your interpretation? Then that means we don't have to believe it. Well, interpretation don't mean you have to believe it because he's interpreting it. Reverend Price, we proved last week that he tried to make the point that the Honorable Elijah Muhammad said that the preachers of Jesus are the greatest hindrance to our people. And that is not what he said in message to the black man. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad said that the preachers of Christianity are the greatest hindrance of the salvation of black people. And again, where did Jesus say he taught Christianity or did someone say that of him? These are the things that we have to prove today. Reverend Price, recapping from last week. Maybe others like him think the same way. Reverend Price made, made a point that Jesus was before Muhammad. So therefore, the Bible was before the Quran. So Jesus said, well, then if the Bible was for the Quran, then the Bible is the greatest authority over the Quran because the Bible is the oldest known source. Wrong. The Bible is not the oldest known source. Reverend Price, the Bible out of which you are reading, Reverend Price, comes from the revised edition 1971. But there were 17 other books that came before 1971. Are you ready? 
I want to illustrate it to you. Show you where white folks out of Europe got their teachings from. Now, I'm not going to even deal, Reverend Price. I mean, one of the oldest known source, according to John Henry Clark. According to Sheikh Antadia. According to uh, Ben Yakana. Actually comes from the Metunetta. The Metunetta is that wall that Daniel speak of where he said the handwriting is on the wall. For the Caucasian went into Egypt where we're from, our homeland, the cradle of civilization that the black man stopped. And they robbed the libraries of Egypt. Is that right? And took out the books. It's in the history, Reverend Price. If you just get off the branches and go to the root, you will find it. Now, here's an illustration right here. According to a scholar by the name of Ahmed Dida. According to the scholar Ahmed Dida. The Bible of 1971. There were books before King James even had some authority. Now, all the Christians, I want you to go study King James. Go read about who King James was and what kind of man was King James. What kind of morals King James had. You read it. I ain't going to even go there. Just saying, there's something funny about King James. <laughs> Now, according to Dida, there were a manuscript out of which this Bible sit on. This is the last one revised in 1971. It sits on 17 ones that came before it. So, Reverend Price, are you using the oldest known source of the word of God? The first one was called the original manuscript. Now, the scholars in Europe says this one is perished. It's gone. The second one, they call this the most ancient copies. Then there's one called ancient copies. Then the ancient version. It's switching reels, isn't it? Now they done put a three on it. It's been stepped on three times. Yes, yeah. This is the raw. This is the pure stuff that'll really get you high. Yes, but he done stepped on it already three times. All right? After the ancient version, then a Caucasian by the name of Varget got it and had his book. After Varget, Wycliffe stepped on it. Then after Wycliffe stepped on it, Tyndale, the book of Tyndale, he stepped on. Yes, Reverend Price, after Tyndale, then Coverdale stepped on. Yes, sir. Now it's about a seven. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. After Tyndale, I mean Coverdale stepped on it, Matthew stepped on it. Then it became the great book. Then after that, Geneva got a hold to it. After Geneva, the bishops got it. After the bishop, King James got it in 1611. Now, here are books way before 1611. But at 1611, King James got it. After King James, Douay got a hold to it in 1582. So is that the book you're talking about as the oldest known source, Reverend Price? After that, it became the revised version in 1881. Are we talking about that one? After 1881, became what is known as the American Standard Version. Now we got about a 14 on it. 
It's not even raw. Then it's the raw. Them said, them watered it down already. Even the books get smaller. Watered down. I mean, you can't give a dope fiend who knows good drugs. You can't give him no boo boo drugs. When he hit it, he'll know, oh, man, you know, oh, man, you know, stepped on that. I mean, those who know what I know about drugs, y'all. You got to make it so plain. The brother in the street got to be able to understand what you're talking about. Is that right? Now, now, the revised standard version of 1952. Now, Reverend Price, you know, the oldest known English translation comes from the Roman Catholic Church. Is that right? Now, in their original books, they had 63 books. I'm sorry, 73. 73. But the revised 1971, out of which Reverend Price come out of, it's only 66 books. Now, who took the other seven books out, Reverend Price, and why? Now, here is that book. That has 73 books in it. Yes, sir. And I have the books that was taken out marked in purple. Yes, sir. This is the original Roman Catholic Bible. And it is older, Reverend Price, than the one you use. It. So why don't you use this one? Look, come on, Christians. Let's die along. Why did they take the seven books? What's in those seven books? You know, Adam got ran out of the garden, right? But Genesis never tell you where he got ran to. But in these books, they tell you where we ran him. Come on, Reverend Price. You could you started this. You could have avoided this. But we thank God for you because there are millions of people now that know about message to the black man because of Reverend Price. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Out of all of these revisions, 1971 is the last. I want to read something to you. What did I do? There it is. In the preface, say that word. Preface. The preface tells you, in the preface tells you how things come about, why they did what they did. Everybody that write a book puts a preface. Why they was inspired to do it? <laughs> Tells you who did it. If this book is the word of God. See, in the nation of Islam, we believe in the truths of the Bible. But we believe and know that it has been tampered with. And it needs to be reinterpreted so that we won't be snared by the holes. There's a hole in the book. It only have 66 books in this one, but the original one had seven books. Why did these 32 scholars take out those seven books? What was in them? But listen at their testimony in the preface. This is the Bible. Y'all all right? Yes, now I have to use this as a backdrop before we go into the, uh, you're here from Reverend Price himself today. Yes, Brothers and sisters, you got to understand why we believe what we believe before you attack us. You have to hear what our interpretation is. Because right. our interpretation, in our opinion, is based on mathematics. Based on science, 
based on tangible evidence. We believe in the seen and the unseen. All right. Now. Listen at this in the preface. Of this particular copyright 1971. Because that's one of the most popular of all the Bibles. And after the Caucasian, this was happening in Europe now. This did not take place in Africa. Y'all all right? This took place in Europe. 1582. Now, in 1582, what was happening to us? I'm going to ask it again, Reverend Price. In 1582, where was black people when all of these books was being revived? Huh? Yeah. Sir John Hawkins in the encyclopedia, he is called the dog of the sea. You and my parents, Reverend Price, was being made a slave at the same time they was revising the Bible. Then they wanted to put it in 15 other languages after they revised it. Then they said, let us put it in 15 other languages because we done took out substantive stuff. So the honorable boy Elijah Muhammad said, when you take something out, when you grab out of something, you have made that thing a devil. Now you have using tricks, taking things out of the Bible, putting things in. That is called in our lessons, tricknology. Because a white man desired to make us slaves. Put it in 15 other languages of the darker people of the planet because they was going to go Throughout the country, throughout the world, in the book of Revelation, Reverend Price, it says, and the white horse went out. And the rider was dead. And everywhere this white horse went, hell followed it. Look at the Caucasians' history. When they left Europe, Everywhere they went, they caused mischief and the shedding of blood, told lies, Reverend Price. Is that right? All praise is due to Allah. This is class, brothers and sisters. Welcome to Muhammad University of Islam. Look. Here in the book say, but lo, the black horse had to get up. And the rider was carrying the scale of justice because he knew what the white horse was going to do. Everywhere the Caucasians have gone, Reverend Price, they know this about them. Everywhere they've gone, they've caused trouble. Come on. Everywhere they have gone, they have told lies. Every one of them. Listen at what the scholars themselves say. Y'all all right? Yeah. I'm going to take my time. Can I take my time? Yeah. I don't want to rush. I want to take my time. We may not get it all out today, but just come back to class next week and be on time. Yeah. Next week, those of you who come in here at 2.30, we're going to be finished. You watch. All late. Gonna be late for your funeral. Listen at the preface. The revised standard version of the Bible is an authorized revision. An authorized what? Revision. You go look up what re mean. R E. This is English language, man. The, revi the authorized revised revision of the American Standard Version published in 1901, which was a revision of the King James Version published in 1611. 
The first English version of the scriptures made by direct translation from the original Hebrew and Greek. And the first to be printed was the work of William Tyndale. He met bitter opposition. He was accused of willfully perverting the meaning of the scriptures. And his testament, his New Testaments were ordered to be burned as untrue translations. Boy. <laughs> they are admitting to listen. He was finally betrayed into the hand of his enemies. And in October 1536 was publicly executed and burned at the stake. Yet Tyndale's work became the foundation of subsequent English versions, notably those of Coverdale. 1535. Then Thomas Matthews, probably a, a, a synonym or pseudonym for John Roger. 1537. The Great Bible, 1539. And the Geneva Bible, 1560. And the Bishop's Bible, 1568. In 1582, a translation of the New Testament made from the Latin Vulgate. Now it done went into Latin. By Roman Catholic scholars and by Roman Catholic scholars and was published at Reims. The translation, the translators who made the King James Version took into account. All of these preceding verses. And comparison shows that it owes something to each of them. I mean, it, it, it took a little bit of something out of all of them, but left some stuff. Y'all all right? Be mad at me. It kept Valicious phrases and apt expressions from whatever source which had stood the test of public usage. It owed most especially in the New Testament, it is owed to Tyndale. The King James Version had to compete with the Geneva Bible in popular use. But in the end, it prevailed over the Geneva Bible. And for more than two and a half century, no other authorized translation of the Bible into English was made. The King James Version became the authorized version of the English speaking people. Of the what? English speaking people. Who was the English speaking people in 1550, 82? White folks, black man wasn't speaking English. Jesus didn't speak English. Reverend Price will bear witness on the tape. He going to tell you the languages that Jesus spoke. He going to bear witness to something. Now, here's a man, Reverend Price. He sets up rules and then turn around and break them. I don't understand. Listen at this. The King James Version has with good reason been termed the noblest monument of English prose. These are prose at it. <laughs> English what? Now, these great scholars, why weren't they writing that it was wrong for the same king to go and send for slaves? We ain't going to even deal with that. Now, its revisers in 1881 expressed admiration for its simplicity, its dignity, its power, its, hap its happy turn of expression. 
the music of its cadence and the, and the facilities of its rhythm. It entered, as no other book has, into the making of the personal character and the public institution of the English-speaking people. We owe to it an incalculable debt. Listen to what they say. They say, yet the King James Version has grave defects. They go on and say, yet, Reverend Price, the King James Version have grave defects. Now, you wasn't back there, Reverend Price. They told you they have grave defects. Then they say, by the middle of the 19th century, uh, let me, yeah, it says have grave defects. Show you. They don't just stop there. They said have grave defects and it is so many it has grave that these have grave defects and are so many as to I mean these have grave defects and are so many and so serious as to call for another revision. By the middle of the 19th century, the development of the biblical studies and the discovery of many manuscripts more ancient than those upon which the King James Version was based made it manifest that these defects are so many and so serious as to call for a revision of the English translation. Woo. Messing around with us, man. Come on, Reverend Christ. Yeah. Now the backdrop has been laid. These defects are so many, right? You go read this in the Bible. I mean, we don't have to. White folks know what they did. So, Reverend Price, are these scholars your teacher? Do you know that every year these same white folks come together to talk about the Bible because they know that people are going to evolve People's minds are going to get sharper. And then they got to run back and uh, cover up what they've done. I wonder is Reverend Price one of those scholars? Have you ever sat down with these scholars, Reverend Price, to revise the book? You know he got his own copyrighted version. Who gave you the authority? King Clinton? Now, we want to roll the tape into where Reverend Price is making a statement that the God of Muhammad should say the same thing as the God of Jesus if they are the same. Because he's saying that one came before the other. Listen at him and then I'll rebut after he finishes. Roll the tape. Y'all all right? No, it is the fountainhead out of which the NOI or better known as the Nation of Islam, which exists today under the under the leadership of Minister Louis Farrakhan. It started with Elijah Muhammad. OK, now Elijah Muhammad said what I just read. Now. Mr. Muhammad says, if we believe that he is a spirit and not a man. What does the Bible say? This is where we left off. Turn to John chapter 4. Now, <clears throat> I didn't tell you this last time, but I want to drop something on you. Because, supposedly, Allah and Jehovah are the same God. It's just that Muhammad... 1400 years ago said that his name was Allah Jesus Christ who lived 2000 years ago said his name is Jehovah and so they there are people that want us to believe that it's the same God just a different name well if that's true 
than the words of Muhammad and the holy book, the Quran, and Jesus Christ and the Bible ought to say the same thing. If it's the same God, they got to say the same thing. Stop. Stop it right there. Just... All right. Don't, don't move it. Keep it right there. Y'all all right? No problem. Listen at his rules. He said, referring to the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, we believe in all the books of God. Old Testament, New Testament, and the Quran. Is that right? We believe in the truths of the Bible. He's, this is him talking, Reverend Price, trying to get his words right. He said that the God of Muhammad, called Allah, should say the same thing as the God of Jesus. They should say the same thing, is that right? Well, then, by the same token, if you are using that just simply because Jesus came first, well, Moses came before Jesus. And Abraham before Moses. What did Abraham call God's name by? What did Moses call God's name by? So Jesus just said the same thing as Abraham. Same thing as Moses. Are they saying the same thing? We're going to get to that. The various books of the Bible should say the same things about the same occurrences. We're going to show you today where different books talking about the same occurrences says two different things. So now we are left, Reverend Price, which one should we believe in? You know what I mean? He's making these rules up. So we're going to go and see if that book, if the books of the Bible say the same thing about the same thing. Now remember, it has grave what in it? Defects. So many, so serious as to it needs what? Revision. This is what the scholars say of the book you got, Reverend. I'm not talking about what Muslims say. I'm talking about these same Christian scholars in Europe who change God's words. Run it. The same thing. Now I pointed this out, but then I want to I add on to this. Add? Oh, okay. Somebody's got to be right. What, some way has got to be the right way. Can't have ten right ways. That's confusion. Now it's interesting to note that if you study this Stop. historically. Must have the right way. Can't be no confusion. Okay, we're going to see if there's some confusion in the book. Go ahead. There's a religion called Buddhism. But Buddha never said, I am the way. There is another religion called Confucianism. And Confucius never said, I am the way. There is another religion called Baha, the Baha faith. And uh, Baha Yallah and Abdul Baha, neither one ever said they were the way. Muhammad, who is credited with being the revealer of Islam, never claimed to be the way. Only in Christianity have I found someone who had the audacity to say, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And no man can come to the Father except by me. Stop it. Now, we're going to work our way up to the last point. He said that the Bible... Or the two gods should say the same thing. By his own rules, let's go into the Bible and let's see if the Bible 
says the same thing. We gave you some of the contradictions last week. We have more for you this week. All right. We're going to start. With second Samuel. Chapter 10. Reverend Price and others like you. But then we're going to go to first Chronicles. Chapter 19, verse 18. Here, Samuel and in Chronicles, they are talking about the same incident, but we get two different variations of the same incident. We want to know either from them 32 dead scholars or from you, Reverend Price, and others like you, we have a decision to make here about two different books talking about the same thing. We want to know which one is true. Listen how it reads. Dealing with a certain amount of soldiers. Dealing with infantry. Samuel reads Samuel, 2 Samuel 10 verse 18. And the Syrians fled before Israel. And David slew the men of 700 chariots of the Syrians. And 40,000 horsemen and smote Shubak, the captain of their hosts, who died there. Okay, 700. But, Reverend Price, First Chronicles telling us of the same incident. You know, it's just like if an accident happened on that corner. Somebody may get hit by a car. Ten people saw it. They went and measured how many feet the person that got hit, they measured how many feet the car knocked him, you know, beyond the point of impact. They measured it was 10 feet. But 10 people seen it. When you go through all 10 people, one person, don't let black folks see it. We exaggerate. Man, it knocked him three blocks. Well, First Chronicles, Reverend Price, 19 reads, but the Syrians fled before Israel. Same incident. And David slew the Syrians 7,000 men. Samuel said how many? 700. Chronicles say 7,000. Now, he goes on to say, which fought in chariots. And 40,000 footmen. But he said horsemen. Samuel said they was on a horse. Chronicles said they was on foot. I mean, this is the Bible, Reverend Price. Who should we believe? Samuel or Chronicles? Or should we go with the book that came first? We need your help right here, Reverend Price. Or others like you. That's one. Dealing with the Bible. We believe in the truth of it, but we believe it's been tampered with. They told us they tampered with it. Now, Reverend Price, I'll give you another one and those like you. Y'all all right? First Kings chapter 7. Second Chronicles chapter 4. This verse is dealing with Solomon's palace. You know, Solomon was a black man. First Kings 7 verse 26 reads, and it was, and it was an hand breadth thick. And the brim thereof was walked like the brim of a cup with flowers of lilies. It contained 2,000 baths. Second Chronicles chapter 4 verse 5 read, And the thickness of it was an hand breadth, and the brim of it like the work of the brim of a cup with flowers of lilies, 
and it received and held 3,000 baths. Now, was it 2,000 baths or 3,000 baths? That's a 50% exaggeration somewhere. Which one of these, Reverend Price, should we believe? You mean God didn't know how many baths Solomon's had? Y'all all right? Another third one. Scholars, it was some grave what? Defects. The scholars of the Bible said we made so many errors, so many defects, as to that the book going to have to be revised again. Question is, who's going to revise it? Some more white folks? I mean, any man that won't teach you right, I mean, any man that won't treat you right, certainly will not teach you right. Reverend Price, how will we know unless we have a teacher? And how can we have a teacher unless he be sent? One was sent in 1930. His name was Master Farad Muhammad. You got to get better acquainted with him, brothers and sisters. Even if you don't like him, get better acquainted with him. You ain't got to believe, but at least get acquainted. Here go another one. We're going we to get out, and then I'm going to go to the New Testament. Second Chronicles chapter 9, verse 25. I, I'm going to take my time. Is that all right? Then we're going to go to 1 Kings chapter 4. Dealing with how many horses and chariots Solomon had. I don't know why they mess up Solomon's stuff. You know, Solomon was the wisest of all men that ever lived, they say. And he was a black man. He tells you, come ye, O daughters of Jerusalem, for I am black. Huh? Me too. Second Chronicles chapter nine, verse 25 reads, and Solomon had 4,000 stalls of horses and chariots and 12,000 horsemen whom he bestowed in the chariot city and with the king at Jerusalem. First Kings chapter four, verse 26 reads, and Solomon had 40,000 stalls of horses for his chariots and 12,000 horsemen. Now, did he have 4,000 stalls of horses or did he have 40,000 stalls? There's a 36,000 stall difference here. Is this one of those grave Defects? Which one should we believe, Reverend Price? This is what Elijah Muhammad has pointed out to us for over 60 years, man. And if one book contradicts the other one, who's the author of this confusion? We know it ain't God. They told you who they were. We ain't through. Let's go to the New Testament. I'm going to just do a couple and we're going to get out. You know, it's, it's so many. We'll be up here all day. Now, let me give you something very, very interesting, though, before I get out of here. It may be on the Internet if you want to look it up or you can go to the Library of Congress. In Brooklyn, New York, September the 8th, 1957, The Awake magazine by the Jehovah's Witnesses. Their scholars claim that they found over 50,000 errors in the Bible. Go back and look up the date again, September the 8th, 1957 in Awake magazine. Now, Reverend Price said that he got a concern with men 
black men coming into the nation. Do you have a concern with black men who join Jehovah Witnesses? Do you have a concern with black men who join Judaism? Do you have a concern with black men who join Buddhism, Shintoism? Why just the nation? Why just the nation, Reverend Price? Why just Islam? Hell, it's over 666 different denominations of Christianity. Which one are you? Oh, you church of God in Christ? Well, are you going to teach against the Baptists? Are you going to teach against the Methodists? Are you going to teach against the Episcopalians? Are you going to teach against the Protestants? Let's go to the book of St. John's. What book? We, we want to answer to this question. Chapter 5, verse 37. Jesus speaking. Ye have neither heard his voice. Talking about God. At any time, nor seen his shape. Now, John 14 and 9 says, he that seen me has seen the Father. But you got shape. Either God has never been seen or he has been seen. Jesus said, when you see me, you see the Father. That's what the Honorable Elijah Muhammad is saying of Master Farad Muhammad. When you see Master Farad Muhammad, his body ain't God, but God is in his person. I mean, you know. Now, Reverend Price went on to say that he can only find in Christianity where one man had the audacity to say he is the way. What does the way mean? He is the way. Way denotes the action. He said, no man get to the father, but by what is the word by me, but by me mean you got to go the same way. Jesus went. Jesus went into the highways and the byways. He went after the death, the dumb. He was hanging around the sinners and the publicans, the gang bangers and the prostitutes. Who do you hang around, Reverend Price? These gang bangers don't even know you. The prostitutes don't even know you. You won't even come out of the faith dome. Or either the faith dome. By mean action. By is the same mathematical symbol as X. One by one, two by two. But you said Jesus said it, but listen to what Jesus said about himself. John 5 and 31, Jesus talking. He says, now here he said Jesus bearing witness to himself, right? But listen to what Jesus said. He said, if I bear witness of myself, my witness is not true. I'm going to say that again. John 5 and 31. Jesus talking. If I bear witness of myself, my witness is not true. Then, but see, this is the confusion. But then in the book of John, chapter 8 and 14, he turned around, and, and, but he say something different. Jesus answered and said unto them, though I bear record of myself, yet my record is true. Wait a minute. Is it true or is it not true? 
Reverend Price, are these one of those grave defects that the scholars talk about? And who is the author of this confusion? Run the tape. Okay. If Muhammad was the one, if Baha, Baha Yallah and Abdul Baha were the one, if Confucius was the one, if Buddha was the one, then how come they didn't say, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no man can come to the Father except by me? Now that, that by itself tells me something. Then, can we get listen to, the, to this. Um, Brother Lemmy, can we get to the next section? Are we there? Is that it? It has been said that Allah, who is the God of the Muslims, and Jehovah, who is the God of the Christian, is the same God, just under a different name. Therefore, as I said earlier, the holy books of both should coincide. They shouldn't contradict each other. Listen. If God is... If God stop, is the stop, person stop, stop. of Allah. They shouldn't do what? Have we found some? Well, what does that make the Bible? If it's a contradictory book. Don't get me wrong. Now, no. You know, I'm saying it ain't that the Bible is a, it's all right. It just ain't holy. Holy means perfect. No contradictions. But it's not. Elijah said it's been tampered with. And then the scholars themselves said we tampered with it. Then they cry. We made so many mistakes that it needs to be revised. Now, Reverend Price, remember white folks was in the dark ages. They was ignorant. It wasn't until the black man started going over into Europe looking at the white man and started civilizing him. Huh? And these was Muslims who went into Europe. The Moors. They were credited with teaching the white man civilization. The Moors tribe. They were Muslims. Study your history, man. History is most attractive and best rewarding in all research. Now he said, roll the tape. Quran, it should not contradict what Jehovah God writes in the Bible. It ought to say the same thing, shouldn't it? I mean, is that reasonable? Now it's interesting that Muhammad who says that he was the prophet and messenger of Allah he quotes the Bible to support many of the things that he says he quotes the Bible now think about this Muhammad came on the scene somewhere around 1400 years ago Jesus came on the scene somewhere around 2,000 years ago. Therefore, Jesus was here first. And the Bible was written before Muhammad died. Therefore, the Bible came before the Quran. Right. Now, if they are the same gods... Then if Muhammad quotes the Bible, it's interesting to note that the Bible never quotes the Quran. So I wonder who be right. And I'll point this out as we go on because we will be reading from the Quran. The Quran and Muhammad, they quote the Bible. Listen. You can't find one single thing from Genesis to Revelation where the Bible ever quotes Muhammad or Allah. Stop it. <laughs> Therefore, if oh, pick up on Stop this, it. if Muhammad quotes why, Joe? 
Hey, all right. He said that, first of all, it's a little silly. I have to be. The New Testament, don't quote the Old Testament. Word for word. I mean, what come? I thought he was a scholar, man. What kind of asinine statement is that? If God is infinite and his wisdom and his people evolve, he don't have to say the same thing he said 4,000 years ago about something today. He gives you history as it uh, is relevant to what will take place in the future. But his words, times evolved. I don't understand that. I mean, by what he just said, the whole Bible is condemned then. Just show me where the New Testament and the Old Testament say the same thing. Show me where Abraham even bear witness of Jesus. Abraham never mentioned Jesus' name, nor did Moses. So, I mean, what? come on. But look, he goes on to say that the Bible don't bear witness to the Quran. But the Quran bears witness to the Bible. Certainly it does. Because we are taught that the Quran verifies the truth that's in the Bible. Because Allah know that them suckers was going to tamper with it. God, he's all knowing, isn't he? He saw them tamping with the book. He could see them. I'm sorry, white folks. Look, he says that Allah is never mentioned in the Bible. Let's see. I'm going to take you to Schofield. I know you can't see this chart. But if you watch it on TV, I hope the cameras can pick this section up in here. This is the Schofield edition of the Bible. In this Bible are footnotes. Schofield tells you where the word God evolved out of what language it evolved out of. Alright? Reverend Price, as we continue to play, he will tell you that Jesus didn't speak English. That Jesus spoke Aramaic and Hebrew. Aramaic and Arabic is really one and the same, depending on what region you're in, it's different dialects. Just like the black man in New York speak a different dialect from the black man in the South. In our West, y'all speak different dialects than anybody. Cub, what up, cub? What up, blood? Oh, man, you say the wrong thing out here and get killed. All right, all right. Cuz gonna get that cuz tonight, cuz. But Schofield, Reverend Price, was a scholar. Maybe you disagree with him. We'll see. In the book of Genesis, it reads God created the heavens and the earth. Mr. Schofield goes to show us how the Bible comes out of the original manuscripts. What language was the original manuscripts written in? Arabic, Aram, Arabic, or either ancient Aramaic or Hebrew. Went into Greek, then Latin. If it came out of Aramaic, Hebrew, and Arabic, what did the Arabs call God? What did the Hebrews call God? They call God Elohim. That's out of Hebrew. Sometimes El, E L, or Ella, E L A H. Then they said, and then it goes on to a uniplural uh, translation coming out of the word Allah. Allah, right here. A L A H. But the Europeans spelled it with one L. But it's still the same word, Allah, showing you that the English word God 
derived from the word Allah, Allah, El, or Elohim, Reverend Price. All praise is due to Allah. Go to the next, go to the next thing. On this. We got to get out of here. And like I said a while ago, if I tell you I'm a prophet, how do you know I am? Got to be some way to validate that. Otherwise, anyway, he could say he's a prophet. He says he's a prophet. He says he's a prophet. And I say I'm a prophet. Now, who be the prophet? How can you tell? See what I mean? So the only way I can go or the only thing I can know is by what you teach or what you say, what you do. Are we at the next point? Some kind of way that'll validate something about who you are. Yeah, we right there. If you say you're a man, you ought to have the equipment to prove it. Mm -hmm. It's real simple. Okay. Now, Mr. Mr. Muhammad says Listen. that God is a man and not a spirit. He said, if we believe that he is a spirit and not a man. So what does the Bible say? John chapter 4 and verse 24. John 4 and 24. This is, this is Jesus, the messenger of Jehovah. And he says in speaking to a woman at the well in Samaria, he says, God, and I want to read the traditional King James. It says, God is a spirit. Now, Mr. Muhammad said, God the what? The traditional is a man okay. and not a spirit. And Jesus said that God is a spirit. Now, we read it in our last lesson. I don't want to go back to it. But a part of the revelation that Mr. Muhammad received, he received it from W. Farad Muhammad, Wallace Farad Muhammad, who Mr. Elijah Muhammad said came on the scene in 1930. Now, 1930 is approximately 1,930 years after Jesus Christ said God is a spirit. Mr. Muhammad comes 1,930 years later and says God is a man and not a spirit. Now, the next question would simply be, who was with God in the beginning to know who and what God is and what God ain't? Amen. To use my very best English. So let's go to John chapter one. This is exactly where we left off last time. The first chapter of the gospel of John. chapter 1 and verse 1 it says in the beginning now 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 I have a question for you how far back is the beginning <laughs> I'll tell you, it's at the beginning. Whenever the beginning was, then there wasn't anything before the beginning or it wouldn't be the beginning. It would be the continuation of what was already there. So if it's the beginning, that means it's starting out. Correctamente? Okay. Now, it says... In the beginning was the word. Now, if you look this word up, remember now you're reading, you're reading a, an English translation of either Greek or Aramaic. We usually traditionally say that our English Bible, the King James Version of the Bible, is from the original Greek language. So the languages are different. Now, this word, W-O-R-D, in the original Greek language Listen. is the word L-O-G-O-S. And the translation of that is that it's talking about Jesus Christ 
in eternity past. Not, not the physical flesh and blood Jesus that walked the earth, that turned the water into wine, that cleansed the lepers, that was crucified and died on the cross, but the Jesus that indwelt that physical body of the one we've come to know as Jesus Christ. He was already in existence before he came to this life and took upon himself a physical body. He's called the Logos. Stop. The second. Stop. No, no. I mean, listen. He's saying that this, the Jesus was the Jesus of eternal past. We all can say that. First of all, to me, he's proven that God can come in the person of a man. And God evolved. See? But we didn't hear Moses calling the God he met with face to face Jesus. We didn't hear Abraham who was a friend of God calling God Jesus. Now, 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 Reverend Price, Abraham was before Jesus. And so was Moses and Isaiah. So now, now, who should we believe? Look, this man, bless his heart. Bless his heart. Roll the tape. Of the Godhead with God in eternity past. So we could say Jesus. Listen to So this. we could say it like this. Hold on. Hold on. In the Stop. Beginning, he said we could say it like this. Now this is his interpretation. It ain't what Jesus said. This is what he's getting ready to say about Jesus. Listen. Now run it. Maybe run it back a little bit. Rewind a little bit. Just a little bit. Rewind it just a little bit. I kick it. So we could say it like this. In the beginning was Jesus and Jesus was with God and Jesus was God. Whoa. Stop. <laughs> Reverend Price, is that, whose definition is that? Whose interpretation is that? Jesus didn't say that. Now, brothers and sisters, we all can say I am that I am. Why? Because every one of us in this room, we are only the finished products of all who came before us. So in your very DNA, your genetic coding is every one of your ancestors. This is why the Bible starts off giving the genealogy of Jesus. Showing you the various men that predated Jesus out of which he came through the same way you and I was born. From the seed of a man. So the book of Romans said that Jesus was the seed of David according to the flesh. And declared to be the uh, son of God according to his spirit. Now, what is spirit? See? What is spirit? Reverend Price, the Honorable Louis Farrakhan is teaching us from the teachings of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad that spirit is energy. And energy is constant. Energy is eternal, man. Electricity is eternal. It can neither be created nor destroyed, but it constantly changes forms. Right? Look, man, every light bulb in here is only a reflector of which God comes through. It is a conductor. But God energy, his spirit, it is so constant. It is so powerful. No body, because the body is not infinite. The body is finite. It can only exist we are taught, Reverend Price, anywhere from 1,000 to 1,500 years. 
This is why the old patriarchs Methuselah lived to be 969. Because he was eating the right kind of food so he could preserve his life through how to eat to live. Reverend Price. Look, Jesus said, now, Moses, brothers, look, you ain't got to be in the beginning if you met the God who came with the eternal wisdom. Hell, he could tell you about the beginning. Now, Moses was here before Jesus. Right. And Reverend Price in the Bible, the scholars say that Moses brought in the first five books. And Moses in the book of Genesis, which is a book belonging to him that God brought through Moses. He started the book off with in the beginning. So Jesus, I mean, Moses, who met God face to face. God told him about the beginning and put it in a book. This one coming, Master Farad Muhammad, he told Elijah about the beginning. He told him everything. He taught him about the people of the earth. Reverend Price, he even taught him about the men who live on Mars. You can call him crazy, but there are black people on Mars. They got to be black. White folks can't last in outer space. Every time they go into outer space, they come back and the, and the scientists say the Caucasian bones started deteriorating. But when they were shooting them black astronauts into space, they say that their bones get stronger. Deal with that at another time in another space. Roll the tape, man. Or the Bible says that Jesus was with. With the father in the beginning. So if Jesus was with God in the beginning and Mr. Elijah Muhammad didn't come along until 1930 years later, it would seem to me reasonably reasonable to believe that whoever was with God in the beginning ought to know who God is and who God ain't. And somebody that's never been with him, how can they know and they were never with him? And the one that was with him said, God is a spirit. And Mr. Muhammad said, God is a man. Hey. All I say is, you know, whatever you whatever you want to believe. But it says something to me. I get something out of that. All right. Now. Hold on. On page number 10, Mr. Stop. Muhammad tells us Stop under the right heading. Here. I he says that Mr. Muhammad says that God is a spirit. Well, he ain't the only one that. Uh, now he said that uh, Jesus said that God is a spirit. That's not what he said in the particular chapter. That ain't all he said. Now he said, now, now. He said in the book of John, I think it was chapter 4, verse what? Verse 24. Okay. It reads like this God is a spirit. Semicolon. And they that worship him. Now, wait a minute. He's a spirit, but then he turned around and called him him. Him is a personal pronoun. Now, he says, God is a spirit. Semicolon. And they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. What is the truth? The truth is, he's a man who's got a spirit. No, no, let's go to it now. Now, Reverend Price, the Old Testament was here before the New Testament. I'm going to walk you through some verses. Jesus wasn't the only one that was with God. 
Genesis chapter 5. What chapter? Five. Verse 22 and 24 reads like this. And Enoch walked with God. And Enoch walked with God. After he begat Methuselah. 300 years and begat sons and daughters. Verse 24 reads, And Enoch walked with God, and he was not, for God took him. That's one place that shows you that Enoch walked with God. They were walking. Take you to another part. This is Old Testament. Now, it was before the New Testament. So should we believe the New Testament over the Old Testament? Or should we believe the Old Testament over the New Testament? Since Jesus said, I didn't come to change Moses' law, I came to fulfill them. Number two, Genesis 6 and 3. Genesis what? And the Lord said, and the Lord said, my spirit shall not always strive with man, for that he also is flesh. Now, 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 for the Lord said, my spirit shall not always strive with man, for that he also is flesh. That's another. Also. I'm not just spirit. I'm also flesh. I can't be one without the other. It's a conjunction. Ties them together. You can't see no spirit, but you can see flesh. We're not finished. Third spot. A, a third spot. Y'all all right? Genesis chapter 18. Verses 1 through 8. Abraham was before Jesus. And Abraham ran unto the herd. No, I got to go back. Okay, here we go. And the Lord appeared unto him in the plains of memory. And, and in the heat of the day, he sat at the tent door in the heat of the day. And he lifted up his eyes and looked. And lo, three men stood by him. Listen. And when he saw them, he ran to meet them from the tent door and bowed himself toward the ground. And said, my Lord. If I have found favor in thy sight, pass not away, I pray thee for thy servant. Let a little water, I pray ye, be fetched and wash your feet. He saw a man. There were three of them. He went and prostrated like the Muslims. He bowed, put his face to the ground in front of one of them. Fetched some water and washed his feet. He didn't call him Jesus. He called him Lord. That is a title that is only befitting to the originator of the heavens and the earth. Or that one through whom his infinite wisdom will come through. Look. And I will fetch a morsel of bread. They ain't going to go get him some bread. Spirits don't eat bread. And comfort your heart. After that, ye shall pass on. And therefore, are ye come to your servant? And they said, so do as thou said. And Abraham hastened into the tent unto Sarah and said, make ready, make ready quickly. Three measures of fine meals. Keyed it. And make cakes upon the. Whatever that word is. Hearth. 
Man, it's... And Abraham ran to her and fetched a calf, tender and good, and gave it unto a young man. And he hasted to dress it. And he took butter and milk and the calf which he had dressed and set before them. And he stood by them under the tree and they did eat. So now here's a God that eat. Jesus, he didn't say Jesus was eating. Go to Genesis 32. Verse 30, speaking of Jacob. Another name for Jacob is Yaku. It reads, and Jacob, Reverend Price, and Jacob called the name of the place Peniel. For I have seen God face to face and my life is preserved. Many say, if you see God, you're going to die. But Jacob said, I saw him face to face and my life is preserved. Now, what spirit you know got a face? I mean, I don't, do we believe Genesis or do we believe the New Testament? Do we believe Abraham? Do we believe Moses? Who do we, help us, uh, Reverend Price. Oh, I got a couple of more places. I'm closing out. Y'all all right? You go to the book of Exodus. Book of what? 15 and 3 read. Some books say Lord. Some books say the God. It reads here. The Lord is a man. It reads here. Some books say Lord. Some books say God. This one say the Lord is a man of war. Not a spirit. The Lord is a man of war. The Lord is his name. Exodus 33 and 11 says, And the Lord spake unto Moses face to face as a man speaketh unto his friend. That's Moses. Another place in the Bible in Exodus 33, 22 and 23. God let uh, allow Moses to see his body parts, but he wouldn't let him see his face. What spirit you know got a body part? Said that God turned so that Moses could see his back parts. You go read it. What spirit you know got a back part? So that he couldn't see his face. Why? Because the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan and the Honorable Boy Elijah Muhammad said, God don't want us worshiping flesh. Because, because we are mature in our understanding, we'll start worshiping the flesh as if it's God. And it is the spirit that dwells within the flesh that is the real originator. And it can leave that body and appear in another one. So Jesus said, this same mind that is in me can be in you. If you would lend yourself over to God's way. Number seven, Deuteronomy. All of these are the first books of Moses. Since you're saying that the oldest book is the, uh, is the authority. And we are in the oldest books according to the Bible as we see it today. It reads... Deuteronomy 34 and 10. And there arose not a prophet since Israel like unto Moses, whom the Lord knew face to face. Now we go to Habakkuk. It reads, God came from Habakkuk 3 and 3. God came from T-Man and the Holy One from Mount Paran. God came from T-Man and the Holy One from Mount Paran. We showed you. Now, we're not in this verse. This one that's called God ain't the one. But the Holy One is 
who the honorable Elijah Muhammad said we should be with. Mount Paran is in somewhere in Arabia. We showed you that last week. T-Man was one of the sons of Adah. Also coming out of a people. Meaning God is coming up out of the lineage of a people. Man, look. The ninth place is in the book of Isaiah. 42 and 13. The Lord or the God shall go forth as a mighty man. The Lord or the God shall go forth as a mighty man. He shall stir up jealousy like a man of war. That's Isaiah. Timothy, this is New Testament. Reverend Price, explain this one. First Timothy, last one and we out of here. 3 and 16. It reads, and without controversy, without what? Great is the mystery of godliness. God was manifest in the flesh, justified in the spirit. Seen of angels. That's Timothy. Reverend Price. Now I ask you. You say God is a spirit. But that ain't what. The book of John. Chapter 4. Verse 27. That's not how it read. That's not how it read. It says God is a spirit. And they who worship him should worship him in spirit and in truth. He already knew the truth of the Old Testament that God was a man. So he didn't have to keep reiterating that point. But he's going to be a man with a tremendous spirit. Reverend Price. We will have to go, brothers and sisters, into next week to where... The Honorable Elijah Muhammad is saying that the Jesus of 2,000 years ago, that man in that body is not coming back. But the spirit that was within that man, that was in that body, will show itself again in another man and another body. And Jesus said he will testify of me. We'll get to that. Next week, inshallah, God willing. Thank you, brothers and sisters. And may Allah bless you as we greet you in peace. Assalamu alaikum. All praise is due to Allah. All praise is due to Allah. Brothers and sisters, thank you so much. Did you enjoy yourself today? I wanted to continue, but we don't want to waste your time. Will you come back next week? How many will come back next week as we continue this series? Bring a Christian friend, brothers and sisters. We're not trying to crush. Again, we love and we love Jesus and we follow Jesus and Moses and Abraham and Muhammad. We just want the truth about these men. We have proved according to the scholars that the Bible have been tampered with. We have the Roman Catholic Bible, out of which the scholars say the many English versions emanate from. But they took out seven books. Next week, God willing, I'm going to show you why they took out some of these books. Because in one of them, it tells you where Adam got driven into. And when Adam looked at his skin, how he was angry with his color. Then it tells you that when Adam, when we drove him, drove him out, we drove him into caves. And Adam got mad because he was driven into the caves and vowed to come back and get the people that drove him into the caves. And they did. They came and got us. Came and got us. And took us on a course too and drove us out of Africa on a ship named Jesus. That we will go into next week. Bring your Bible, brothers and sisters. 
Welcome to Muhammad University of Islam. How many of you are with us for your very first time? Who's with us for your first time? All of our first time guests, raise your beautiful hand. Don't be scared. Ain't no white folks in here. Oh, come on, Muslims. What's wrong with the mic? Come on, Muslims. Give them a round of applause. Give them a better. How many of you, brothers and sisters, enjoyed the spirit of the lecture? Raise your hand. Man, all praises due to Allah. Thank you. I'm trying to create dialogue, not be offensive. Don't be mad at me. Get mad at who tampered with the Bible. Not me. But it's enough juice in the Bible to get us up out of this present day bondage. Because they left a lot of stuff in the book about black people. From Genesis to Revelation. This is why we must go on a defensive. How many of you believe what you heard today to be the truth and good for the oppressed people? Raise your hand. Oh, then give yourself a round of applause if you believe that. Now, if you believe what you heard today to be the truth and good for black and oppressed people, how many of you would like to learn more? How many of you would like to learn more? Raise your hand if you want to learn some more. I mean, ain't nothing wrong with learning, brothers and sisters. Well, how will you know? Unless you have a teacher. And how will you have a teacher unless he be sent? You want them 32 scholars to send you a teacher? Or do you want God to find one from among us? The problem is, when your own come to you, will you accept them? Or will you wait on somebody white to give you the truth? Now, how many of you want to learn more and join on with the bold leadership of Brother Farrakhan? Learn more and help us get our people. If you want to do that, stand up. Stand up. Stand up if you want to learn more. Don't sit down knowing you want to learn more. Stand up, black man. Don't sit down. Come on, black woman. Come on if you want to learn more. Come on down if you want to learn more. Come on down if you want to learn more. Bring my beautiful sisters. Bring the mighty black man on down. Who else want to learn more about this truth? We need your help. Anybody else? You need our help. Don't be scared. We ain't going to let nobody turn us around. Huh? Man, that sounds kind of good. We ain't going to let no... Man, let me stop. <laughs> Come on, brothers and sisters. Somebody sitting in the seat, man, I kind of want to do this, man, but... Hey, man, ain't ready to be no moves. Man, I don't want to stop getting high. Don't stop. Keep getting high and keep coming. That's all. So come on. Come on. Don't worry about you. If it gets to a point when you learn, and if this ain't the place you want to be, that's okay. There's no compulsion. But after we get through teaching you, you at least should be better understanding of why we teach what we teach. And even if you don't join us, you can defend us. And no, there's some things I ain't understand about the movement, but it's some stuff I like. But let your understanding be based on truth. Let's give these beautiful brothers and sisters another round of applause. Hold it. Come on, Muslim, give them a mighty welcome to the nation of Islam. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. That only means God is the greatest. How you doing, dear sister? Wonderful. Your name? Gloria. Sister Gloria Hicks. You was invited by your husband? Who is your? Gone. Oh. oh, man, that's beautiful. This is Sister Gloria Hicks, brothers and sisters. 
I want to ask the family, do you accept Sister Gloria? Will you help us to teach her everything you know that's right and good? Will you respect her? Brothers, will you help us protect her? Will you give your life for her? If need be, will you take a life for her? Sisters, do you accept her the way she is? Will you help her to become the woman that God would like for her to be? Sisters, are y'all going to welcome her? Tell her who you are. Are you going to introduce yourself to her? Are you going to tell her, stay strong, my sister? Then, Sister Gloria, welcome to the nation of Islam, sister. If you would go with this sister, she has something for you. How you doing, ma'am? Your name? Sister Mary Christian. Oh, wonderful. Were you invited by someone? Who invited you? Brother Verna. Boy, you get another star on your crown. That's why your head is shining today. Go ahead. This is Sister Mary. You know, Mary was one of the mothers of Jesus. Well, the black woman can bring a Jesus too. This is Sister Mary. Do you accept Sister Mary? Will you teach her everything you know that's good? Will you respect her? Brothers, will you help to uplift her? You know no nation can rise any higher than this woman. Is that right? Brothers, will you give your life for her? Will you take a life for her? Sisters, do you accept her the way she is today? And will you help her to become the woman that God would like for her to be? What if Sister Mary was hungry and she seen you with a bowl of bean soup? How much of it could she get? Welcome, Sister Mary, to the nation of Islam. How you doing, little sister? Welcome to the nation. If you would go with sister, let's give these two beautiful black queens. You can do better than that. Give them a round of applause. We thank Allah for them. Come on, black man. How you doing, my brother? Walaikum salam. Your name, sir? LeGrant. Brother LeGrant? Yes. And you was invited by? Brother Vernon. Brother Vernon. Good God Almighty, Brother Vernon. Another star. No wonder his bald head shining today. Man, that's beautiful. This is Brother LeGrant. I want to ask you, do you accept Brother LeGrant? Yes, Will you teach him everything you know that's good and right? Yes, Will you protect him? Will you do that? Yes, Brothers, will you accept him the way he is? Yes, will you help him to become the man that God would like for him to be? Yes, will you lead him into all truth? Yes, You'll do all of that? Yes, then if you would do that, I can welcome him with strength to the nation of Islam. Yes, May Allah bless you and thank you, Brother Vernon. If you would go with that brother, Brother LeGrant, right there. Get that soldier a round of applause. I mean, Brother Vernon brings him in. Today, he's a fisher of men. How you doing, dear brother? One name, your name? Charles. Brother Charles. Did Brother Vernon invite you to? <laughs> no, sir. How did you come today? Uh, another, another brother, uh, brother Howard? Richard. Brother Richard? Did you bring this brother, Brother Howard? You gave him a fly. That's like bringing him. That's General Giant, that brother about 6'8". Yeah. Big old, beautiful, smiling black man. Your name again? Charles. Charles. Brothers and sisters, this is Brother Charles. Do you accept Brother Charles? Will you teach him everything you know that's good and right? Brothers, will you help us protect him? Will you accept him the way he is? And help him to become the man that God would like for him to be? Brother, what if you had a big old pot of bean soup? Because brother don't look like he need a bowl. He's a big man with big arms. He may need a half a pot. If you had a pot, how much could he get? Brother Charles, welcome to the nation of Islam, dear brother. If you would go with that brother right there, he got something for you. Let's give Brother Charles another round. How you doing, soldier? Your name, my brother? Brother Alonza. Brothers and sisters, this is Brother Alonza. Do you accept Brother Alonza? Will you teach him everything you know that's good and right? But if he has something good and right to teach you, would you listen? Brothers, do you accept him the way he is? Yes, Will you help him to become the man that God would like for him to be? Yes, Can he come into the army of God? Yes, Can he fight on behalf of God? Yes, Can he go after the lost sheep? Yes, the rejected stone? Yes, brother, welcome to the nation of Islam, Brother Alonzo. If you would go with that brother, how you doing? Wa alaikum salam, dear brother. Your name? Brother Tariq. Brother Tariq. 
Brothers and sisters, this is Brother Tyreek. Already got a name of wisdom, so we know he got knowledge. Is that right? Yes, now, let me ask you, do you accept Brother Tyreek? Yes, Will you help to teach him everything you know that's good and right? And if he got some good and right to teach us, will we listen? Yes, Brothers and sisters, will y'all help us to protect him? Yes, Brothers, will you help him to become the man that God would like for him to be? Yes, Brother Tyreek, with a name like that, we know that Islam touched either your life or somebody in your family life somewhere. So welcome home, prodigal son. Thank you for all that and support for Brother Tony Bogo, too. Praise be to Allah. Yes, sir. Thank you, brother. Thank you so much. I appreciate those words. Brother was with hands across Watts, and he's thanking us for all the help we gave to Brother Tony Bogard. And he said uh, he's coming out of hiding now. He came to get some energy. So, again, let's welcome Brother Tyreek back home. If you would go with him, give Brother Tyreek another round of applause. How you doing, my brother? And your name? Kirkland Clark. Brother Kirkland Clark, yes. brothers and sisters, this is Brother Kirkland Clark. Do we accept Brother Kirkland? Yes, sir. Will you teach him everything you know that's good? Yes, sir. Will you respect him? Yes, sir. Will you help us protect him? Yes, sir. Will you help him to become the man that God would like for him to be? Yes, sir. Brothers and sisters, then we welcome Brother Kirkland to the nation of Islam. Welcome home, Brother Kirkland. Honored to meet you. If you would go with this, brother. How you doing, top soldier? Go ahead, black man. Good to see you. Your name? Alonzo. Brother Alonzo? Yes, sir. Another one. Alonzo. This is Alonzo. Brothers and sisters, do you accept Brother Alonzo? Yes, sir. Will you teach him everything you know? Yes, sir. Will you respect him? Yes, sir. You'll do all that? Yes, sir. Do you accept him the way he is today? Yes, sir. Will you help him to become the man that God would like for him to be? Yes, sir. Big as this, brother, and he might know something and can help us. Is that right? Then, Brother Alonzo, welcome to the nation of Islam, dear brother. All praise. Say, hungry for knowledge. We pray a lot that we can give you more knowledge. Give Brother Alonzo another round of applause. Look at all them black men. Give them another round of applause. Reverend Price got a concern that all these black men coming to the nation of Islam. All praise is due to Allah. Brothers and sisters, man, did y'all enjoy yourself? All praise is due to Allah. Brothers and sisters, next week is going to get a little deeper and wider with the help of Allah. And I pray that as people watch this on television, that it helps us to create dialogue. We don't hate our brothers and sisters that are Christian. Stay there. We just say, make sure you got the truth. See, because when truth see truth, truth will recognize truth and respect truth. We don't care nothing about what label you call yourself by. We care more about your actions. What you do is who you are, not what you say. You can't say you with Jesus and then you turn around and get high. You can't say you with Jesus and you turn around and go to bed with every man you see. You can't say you with Jesus and then turn around and tell a lie. You can't say you with Jesus and you a dope dealer. Nah, you ain't with you ain't with nobody. So with that being said, brothers and sisters, we're going to go to the next phase of our program, and that is charity. And we need your help. If we are to continue this ministry, we need your help. We have today, you see these cameras, it costs us to put this program on TV. How many of you have seen this particular program in L.A. and Inglewood on television? Okay, do you enjoy? Well, we need your help to keep it on. Now, we also need your help that we can continue to keep the doors of the mosque open. We also need your help that we can expand our literature, that we can expand our ministries, that we can expand all of the programs set up by Brother Farrakhan. We need your help. If you believe what you heard today to be the truth and good for our people, the government ain't going to give us no money. They don't want us to. Those scholars ain't going to give us the money. We need your help.